call the Hopkinton Town Council meeting of August 17, 2015 to order with a moment of silent meditation and salute to the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First on our agenda, folks, is a proposed ordinance amendment. Opening hearing on proposed amendment to Code of Ordinances, Chapter 11, Parks and Recreation, Article 1, to add Sections 11-3, Smoking Prohibited on Town Fields and Parks, introduced and sponsored by Council President Frank Lindo. Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, the solicitor, Pat Buckley, wants to uh, uh, say a few words. <coughs> I'm going to discuss that the stage, that's all. Um, this was uh, Mary's brainchild, as you can imagine, since it deals with the recreation department issues. When it was originally floated around, um, when we were originally talking about it, it had a little different focus. In other words, it, it wasn't Crandall Field, Langley Field, Bricks Park. It had things like the top lot, stuff within, you know, items that were within our parks and fields. That's the reason for the 50-foot issue why it says that you would not be allowed to smoke on the property or within 50 feet. Obviously, we can't enforce it if somebody's out on the street smoking. Right. We can only enforce it on our property. So um, through a couple of uh, changes that we made as the thing went through, it became more focused on strictly Candlefield, Langley Field, Briggs Park, North Street Park, and Polish Park. And it, this is going to be fine um, without the 50-foot requirement if it just prohibits if you just take that out, just as smoking is prohibited on and within the following town on the fields. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that, and then the enforcement mechanism makes sense because if you notice it down further, it says anyone who violates it can be subject to immediate removal, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to obviously be able to take them off the public street. <laughs> so if, if you just delete that within, with that, all you have to take out is the 50 feet, um, and the rest of it will work fine. So that's probably the way in which you should be looking at it tonight. Okay. <coughs> That's all I want to say. Okay, I'm just going to continue along. Uh, the proposed amendment would add Section 11-3 as follows. The Town of Hopkinton is committed to providing and maintaining a safe and healthy recreational environment for residents and visitors on its town-owned fields and parks. The goal of this ordinance is to provide smoke-free areas to attain a healthier recreational environment and safeguard non-smokers from the risks of passive smoke. Smoking prohibited. Smoking is prohibited on or within. Well, we just uh, redacted the, uh, the following town home fields Crandall Field, Langworthy Field, Briggs Park, Laurel Street Park, and Polish Park. Enforcement a sign or signs notifying individuals that smoking prohibition shall be posted at each of the above locations. Anyone violating the terms of this ordinance shall be subject to immediate removal by site of the Hopkinton Police Department. Repeat offenders shall be subject to banishment from all towns recreational areas by the recreational director. Any <coughs> such imposed ban may be appealed by the town manager. All other sections of Chapter 11 shall remain in full force and effect. This amendment shall take effect upon passage. Okay, council discussion. Who wants to start? David. I'll start. <clears throat> um, I don't think we've got a problem with smokers on the these parks. Uh, you know, I, I, I have to go and buy any of these parts, and I know exactly where they all are, and seeing people out there smoking either pipes, cigars, or cigarettes. That's number one. The 50-foot thing I'm glad we got rid of because that's just ridiculous. You can't you can't tell people that are walking on the sidewalk or on the street or on the, the houses that are butt any of these parts that you can't smoke in them because it's 50 feet. So we got rid of the 50 feet and that's fine. Three is that it's really un unenforceable. We really need our police officers cruising around these parts to see if they can catch somebody smoking a cigarette. And then they're going to have them forcibly removed. I guess that's that's what they're going to do. And if we if we focus on these parks, why is it just the parks? Why is it all town property? Why aren't we focused on the land trust property, for example? I mean, for to be smoking while somebody's hiking along with the trails in this kind of town. So I just think this is a little bit politically correct, over overdone. It's just it's just too much. So uh, I'm not in favor of this. Uh, I don't think we've got a problem with smokers on. If somebody's smoking a cigarette, put a sign up. If you don't want people smoking down there by the, by the, by the children's play area, put a sign up and say no smoking. Just like we have no smoking here in, the, in, this, in this room or in this building. Fine, you put a sign up, 
We don't have to have an ordinance for this. So if we don't want people smoking, put a sign down there by the ball field, Mary, put a sign by, down by the, by the playground down there. But, you know, to, to have the police you know, go, go by Polish Park, up where I am, it's a little tiny park with a couple of benches, and keep an eye out for somebody that might be sitting on one of those benches having a cigarette, it's just ridiculous. The, the police have better things to do than cruise around the parks looking for smokers. That's what I have to say. Um, I don't smoke. I've never smoked. My parents smoked full time. My siblings and I have no issues with our lungs. I know that passive smoke is a problem. I know they have studied it. I certainly understand. I concur and approve of the banning of smoking in enclosed areas. I don't know of any study addressing the health problems with secondhand smoke in the atmosphere. And I'm willing to read three or four of them. You can find them. I'm happy to read them. Tobacco is not a ban or an illegal substance. Smoking has been part of all cultures since time immemorial. And I believe people have a right to their legal and private vices and need never apologize for them. Um, I do not wish to enlarge the petty misdemeanors that the police are responsible for arresting or for the glut of new ordinances that will clog the courts more thoroughly than they are at present. I consider this a waste of public monies. I also believe, as Councillor Husband has addressed, that there are private properties and public roadways that this ordinance will affect in a negative manner. There's even a business right next to Griggs Park, um, a very large business um, in that area. I happen to like pipes, and I think people have the right to smoke in the outside air, certainly not in enclosed spaces. And I feel this is just too much like Big Brother for me. Uh, I can't go there. Okay, Sylvia, so you're up. Um, in the uh, middle section where we took out the 50 feet, uh, smoking is prohibited on town fields of park. Uh, I was thinking about the uh, Crandall field and where you list these fields and parks, and I was just wondering if it would just be easier to say town owned field park, town property, and fields and parks, and, um, and do it that way. Uh, because List, my only issue was listing the name of the of the parks. What if there are parks in the future, or park gets named something else? I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm being silly, but I just thought it, it would be easier to just say town property or town owned fields, parks, and property. Well, that's the, the, the streets this town are by, by town owned streets, town property. <clears throat> can't, so you got to be on the streets. You can't do that. Town post office. Um, yeah. Oh, post hold office. on, Mark. So. But um, so my my original uh, idea was to not name these parks and fields, and um, and not name them. So I didn't. That's why I'm throwing it out there, whether or not to say property, and the, does that then bring in the land trust property? So I understand the reason to to name them if you're going to do this, but I also wondered if maybe we should, and there was another language, um, and I, and I. I just, that's why I threw it out there. Well, let me just ask you, Sylvia, to your point. I mean, if you list town property, then that's town hall. Right. It's we don't have smoke in the town hall. So it's the property. It's just it's a, a property. property. It's, it's my parking lot. So, they, so people can smoke out here, but can we get smoke in any of these five parts? Is that how it goes? I mean, we can smoke a cigar on the back, right there behind the town hall, but you can't smoke in one of the parks. And, you know, well, so, I guess yeah, other than that, um, I look forward to hearing from the rec department and why they brought it up. Maybe there's an issue of butts all over the place. Tom, before um, we hear um, <laughs> um, Actually, I, was, I really just thought this was a slam dunk. Um, you know, I'm not, I've never been in favor of, of uh, putting more laws against people. I mean, alcohol is the worst thing. That's because yeah. more people need cigarettes with secondhand smoke. And there's more than one problem, too. Yes. But my other question is I definitely want to get married. Um, oh, actually, I had a problem with an individual who was 14 year old, years old. The police were called, and he was smoking a cigarette. And I said, he's underage. He's, he's got a cigarette. I just wanted to add it to the issue. I'm not worried about that. We don't, we don't worry about that. That was right out of one of our police officers. Yes. So the other question I have is, um, Mary, are there problems? What are the problems? Are there complaints? Um, because I've been down there a number of times, and the only time I ever seen anybody smoking is over on the picnic table by the parking lot, not on the playground area. 
Uh, I've never seen the kids um, over in the basketball court smoking. Um, I just I need to know where did it stem from. And, let me just give one second here. I'm, I'm going to interject my thoughts on this. Defer to Mary. You know, I think we're overthinking this thing, guys. I mean, you know, we're talking about parks where the kids play. I mean, what's so hard about trying to keep secondhand smoke from, from harming them? I mean, I, I just think it's, it's really unbelievable that this is not uh, something that we endorse as a council. I mean, everybody's overthinking it, and, uh, and it really shouldn't be overthought. I think it's uh, pretty straightforward. And I'm not, I'm not saying this because I'm, I, I was the one that was picked to sponsor it, but it, it's really, it's secondhand smoke. And, you know, we've taken out the 50 feet, and uh, it really is a, is a no-brainer. I mean, I can't, it's not like we're asking people to, it's, it's an environment for kids. What is wrong? I, I don't understand it. Anyway, I'm just baffled by the comments here made tonight on a simple subject. Mary, please. No, I don't. It's, it's, it's totally about kids. Thank you for considering this um, ordinance. We've been in the discussion for probably close to a year, as I would say. Um, and um, we've been in discussion with this for a couple of years. So we've talked about it. Um, we've gotten a lot of feedback from staff. Um, and um, let me just tell you where this sort of originated. Um, a representative, Astrid Mayher from Charitable Tritown Task Force. Um, has been working with different cities and towns throughout Rhode Island um, in an initiative to um, provide healthier atmosphere, you know, in specifically recreational facilities where children are playing. Um, so, yes, is there a problem? Um, I think there's a problem. Um, every Saturday during baseball season, I sit out at Crandall Field and People come, it's, there's probably more family coming than actual kids playing. It's great. Um, and people sit on the picnic table between where the bathrooms are and where the field is and smoke away, smoke away. They throw their butts on the floor, on the ground, and leave them there. Um, so a couple of times I've asked, you know, could you please go to the parking lot or could you please, you know, fell on deaf ears. Um, the, Second hand smoke, um, and I can give you some articles because we were given quite a few articles, the Recreation Commission and I, with different studies. Second hand smoke is not the only issue. It's cigarette butts on the ground, kids throw balls on them, you know, they pick the balls up, the, it gets transferred, the toxins, the chemicals and all that get transferred, they put their hands in their mouth, on their feet, you know, they stomp all over them, you know, it's just I feel inappropriate to have smoking around recreational facilities where children are playing, where grand grandparents and parents are coming to watch. And um, I don't, you know, everyone has their choice whether they want to smoke or not. I'm a firm believer in that. I have smokers in my own family. But um, we would like to do our part to provide um, a healthier, safer environment for people who are coming for recreational purposes, passive or active. I just don't think people, I think people have the right to breathe in fresh air and not polluted smoky air and have garbage cigarette butts all over the, all over the ground. Now as far as the police, I think that's, I can't imagine if we post signs, just like the snowmobiles, we have an ordinance against snowmobiling, golfing, and horseback riding um, in the, um, in Cranley Field, in, in that parks, because it's dangerous. Um, a handful of times we've had to call the police about snowmobiling, but posting signs usually does the trick. I think most smokers, if they see that there, they see that other people see there's a sign there. Um, but you know, we do have to have some sort of, um, lack of a better word, punishment or whatever. Um, um, tea. Tea. Tea, thank you. <laughs> I was thinking here is no tea. <laughs> it's a long summer. Um, to, um, you know, like we're serious about this. We believe that um, we want to have clean air, practice safe, safety health uh, uh, practices in Hopkinton and around our children and grandparents and parents. Um, you know, I'm a little, I was a little stunned at your comments, but I can appreciate them because there are some members of my family here that be standing up and saying the same thing. But 
I would say to you that there are plenty of places to smoke. We all know that smoking and secondhand smoke causes severe health risks. Um, and we're asking for just these areas in our town that we just say, look, we don't want you to do that here. You know, let's be safe, let's do the right thing and, um, and promote a healthy lifestyle, especially in our recreational facilities. Um, and uh, I, 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 like I said, I was a little surprised at, at, at the comments, as Frank said as well, but um, I just hope you would consider anyone else if, if that's here tonight would speak for <laughs> this uh, proposed ordinance. Um, I don't really think the police will have to get involved. Um, I think that it's, if you have a, a, a very um, mm -hmm. stubborn person that's going to argue with you, you can say, look, I'm going to call the police if you just don't stop chain smoking here in, the, in front of the T-ball kids. So. Yes, Tom. Uh, one other question I had. had um, have you just put up signs just to try to see what it is before going to this? We over the years put up signs. Um, oh, you have them Usually the signs, see signs, <laughs> signs are tough too. They usually get taken down. We over the years we put up signs, um, and um, we were convinced after you know discussing it with the with the commission and with members of the Jarrow Task Force that um, this is about you know also prevent role modeling as well. You know. Um, it's, it's not a good habit to get into why, you know, let's do our part to provide a healthy atmosphere as much as we can and to provide a good role model for kids. I mean, that's just how I, that's how I feel about it. Yes, David. Mary, with or without an ordinance, if you put up signs, you say they're taken down, people, people vandalize them or take them down or whatever. Having an ordinance is not going to do you any good unless you consider that you're going to go around to those people and say, hey, we have an ordinance, you can't smoke on here. And they say, I didn't see any sign. And then they have an excuse to a certain extent because they didn't see any sign. So I, I think, I, I have no problem with you putting up signs uh, by the basketball court, by the, by the way, any place you want to, on, on any one of the fields, say no smoking. All right? <coughs> and if they come down, we're just going to have to put them up again. But I think that's the way to stop it. And eventually the, the idea gets out, okay, there's no smoking down there. And, that, and that'll, that'll solve it. To have an ordinance that we really can't enforce, we don't really want to enforce it because we don't want to have to call the police. The police really don't want to come down there and tell some guy with a cigarette because there's no, there's no fine. Just to take it off the property. You know, that, that's pulling you away from something that you probably should be better off doing. So, uh, I, I'm all for signs. Put up some signs. I have no problem. We have signs in this building. There's signs I'm sure down at the Grand House and, you know, Miley, all these places, but just put, just put some signs up. I think she said that she's tried that. Yeah. Right. But, if, but if I have an ordinance without signs, it's, it's kind of hollow because people don't know there's an ordinance. You can say, well, they knew it at first because they read it in the paper or something like that, but that, that disappears in six months, and then by next spring, people have forgotten that there was an ordinance and it was in the paper. You're going to have the signs. If you don't have the signs, you're not going to win this battle. Also, have really appropriate signs that are in metal, and they have metal stakes. They're not just posted, but they're actually signs that people have trouble removing so that they can do that. Because I'm happy to have signs up at the top lot or the basketball area, but just so that they can move. Because then they do know that there's, maybe then they can at least think there's some teeth, even if there's not. Yeah, so we have I think um, that uh, you absolutely need an ordinance. You won't have signs and they say, so what? They can sit in their car and they're going to smoke if they want it. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. You can ask them not to, and they're going to say, well, OK, you're not. Or when you need light up. So, I think we need the ordinance, and it's not an issue of cops driving by and seeing a smoker and smoke. We'll get him. It's an issue of your staff now being able to go out and inform people politely and just say, we do have uh, a change here. We have a smoke-free environment. And when you put up your signs, it's not just no smoking. It's per ordinance. And, you know, you have, it's more official. Um, I would think you'd want a sign like that so people know that well, I need you to inform me. We did pass an ordinance. It's not okay, and I don't really want to call the police. So, in the future, please don't smoke. If they keep repeating and doing this, then they get banished. They're they're thrown off the property, and, and eventually, if they want to come back, then they got to appeal to the town manager. So, I think that this is the only way to stop it. And eventually, everybody's going to know if you can't smoke down there. Um, they're going to find out that it's not okay, and it'll be through your staff informing people. And then if it's a repeat offender, but I do agree that 
is, is sinking in smoke, you know, it's going to float up in the air, the wind's blowing. But uh, role models, you're right. It, you have a healthy environment there, you're playing with kids, and, and we're all role models, and we shouldn't be down there smoking. Well, let's not forget who this is about. It's not about the adults. It's about the kids mm -hmm. and having a healthy environment as an area of state. You know, I don't think there's one person that you enact in the ordinance that smoke free in recreational areas that are going to complain. It happens all the time in business. You can't even smoke in, in offices anymore. They can't even smoke within 50 feet downtown in the financial district. It happens all the time, and it's for a good reason. So some of these parks aren't on, on, on key parks. Polish Park is a little triangle with about four benches, maybe three. And that's all that is the hedge. And that's it. And it's lucky the grass is well, I don't think there are adults playing in it, David. I don't think anybody uses it. Well, maybe not, but, yeah, but we can't, just, we can't yeah. single them out and not say, you know, let's not put it there either. Well, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, I have a question. Yes, sir. Bridge Park. Bridge Park is a, it goes down to the river. And, guy, and guys go down there fishing all the time. There's an old man that's got that cute little hat with lures stuck to it. Fly fish is down there. He smokes a plate. There's nobody in that park. There is nothing there but that gentleman. I don't have a if, if, if the report uh, uh, ordinance, that's fine. I really think, and not these gaudy Walmart, no smoking signs. I think you should do like Rhode Island DEM, get a green board, park rules and regulations. Bang. There's no state ordinance that says you can't smoke on uh, boat landings and stuff like that. But it's there. It's in there. No trash. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah. So there's no open, overnight camping and stuff. That's all on that nice green board when you go in. Do you mean before an ordinance is developed or after? Before. I would think I would be for. I mean, mm -hmm. and Lou Love. I mean, I, I'm just I'm against over government. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't know if it's David Barber. We keep adding more and more stuff to, 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 to things. Um, people have a right to, to their own personal things. If an ordinance goes in, the only way I would vote for it is for uh, Maybe just Crandall Field or Langley Field, because that's where the kids are. Maybe just those two parks. What do you got to do when I do fireworks? I put out a bunch of smoke. That fireworks. Well, that's that fireworks. You're not smoking not fireworks. Smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that if the smoke just, is the issue. Hold on, but, um, Role model. That was the that was the thing. I, I agree 100 percent with mm -hmm. role model. Well, part of it. But to um, hinder somebody on their own personal preference, I bet, and add more to the laws. I don't, I'm, also, I'm, also, I'm also concerned that, you know, if you if you toss someone off, the parents are there smoking, which they are on baseball and t-ball, you're basically going to remove the parent who has to remove the child. Because the, the parent can't leave unless the child goes with it. So you've now taken the parent off the field, and in so doing, you have pulled the children off the field. That's a very extreme example, I think. It's not extreme. Honestly, I mean... It's, it, it's for it's, adults, not just for children. Right, but for the adults and health benefits as well. Uh, you know, with the, the Recre Recreation Department and Commission, we have to set forth a lot of rules, policies, back, I'm just thinking basketball right now, for behavior, for what you're allowed to bring into the gym, what you're not allowed to bring into the gym, how you are to address referees, um, what, you know, smoking on school property, that's not allowed as well. We, as a commission, uh, I don't want to speak for you, but I know, you know this is what we've discussed, feel that you know, it's the commission's charge um, to be responsible for what goes on on recreational parks and fields. This is something they feel very strongly about, we feel strongly about. I've witnessed firsthand the disgusting part of smoking and the, the really just ignorance, I'm sorry, of people who, who don't think twice about sitting there, smoking away while people are trying to enjoy watching children play tennis, whatever it is. Um, I'm very nice, you know, I'm a nice person. I'm not going to, you know, I can't imagine. There might be one person, maybe, in the next 10 years that we would have to throw off the field. But this, 
is just a policy that we believe that should be we should identify with and join in our efforts to keep children safe um, in a clean environment as much as we can and do our part in that. Um, I guess we could think about all kinds of crazy scenarios, but I really I, I doubt that's going to happen. I've been there long enough to I think. One crazy person we've had to throw out of a basketball game in 18 years, you know, I think he was drunk or something. <laughs> um, but this is a statement, it's, it's, a, it's a guideline, it's about role modeling, it's about health, um, and, you know, we live in the 21st century. We all know what smoking does. Smoking, on, you know, garbage on the ground from cigarette butts, that can get transferred to children as well, to people as well. Um, Pets, you know, all of it. It's just bad, 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 bad. So I hope you would reconsider your, your students here um, and support this ordinance. I know you have another couple of weeks to think about it, too. So. Dave, you know, this is a very slippery slope, Mary. Because I'll tell you what, the next thing we're going to have is an ordinance, no spitting. And I'm not kidding, because spitting is a very dirty thing, and you get spit. Who knows what, what problem they have with spitting? So they're spitting on the field, and then the ball hits the spit, and the ball is on the ball. Uh, and the next thing you know is you're going to have nobody walking around without shirts on. Because, you know, that's just rude and, and, and you know, they, they're sweaty. And it goes on and on, you know, no sugary drinks on the field. And I don't think sugary drinks are really bad for, for people. We're trying to make the, give you a healthy environment here, so no sugary drinks on the field. No swearing. You know, no swearing in here. You know, God, using God's name. <coughs> Where does this stop? I mean, it's just, if. Let's put up some signs and say no smoking. And if they rip the signs down, let's put some new signs up. But I don't think they rip them down that often. And you know what? It says no smoking, and most people will abide by that. If they, I don't want anybody, any employee of this town, having to go out at all hours of the day, whether it's the morning, noon, or night, you know, and patrolling around to make sure there's nobody smoking, and to tell them, well, you can't be smoking on here because if you, if you allow you to smoke, this person over here might want to smoke. I don't want employees, whether they're police or whether they're your staff, to be wandering around on all five parks. Don't forget, you just can't be hanging out down here. You got to go up to uh, Polish Park and down to Briggs Street, down to Briggs Park down here. So, I, you know, I, nobody wants to do that. I don't want the, I don't want the employees doing this. So, the bottom line is, it's slippery slope. I can't see it being enforced. I can see if you don't have signs up because they get torn down and you just have no ordinance, people aren't going to like that either. So, you know, and they're not going to buy by it. So, you got to put the signs up. I, I say put the signs up and leave it at that. Ordinances are just this is getting out of control. Well, anyway. I disagree totally. I will support Mary. Uh, I think the comments made here tonight are just ridiculous, in my opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, but uh, it's a very simple matter, and it was about the kids, and they're going to save, save healthy environment, and uh, a healthy environment. And uh, we need to you know, uh, frame it up where it's just where the kids are playing and not fishing or whatever, that's fine, but I just think we're missing the point. Um, is anyone out in the public wishing to be heard on this, Scott?
of smoking on beaches, like beach property. So that is already been out there, and I was just curious. Well, violence is a loss all over the place for smoking, in all kinds of public areas. I mean, they, it's, 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 it's so incredibly common in this day and age that I'm a little taken aback too by the comments. Um, I mean, it's just it's something that you encounter everywhere you go these days. I just wanted to ask that question in plain out since the importance of Kringle property in the sense that a lot of events are held there. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Anyone else? I just, I just wanted to follow up on Scott's comment about festivals and, and concerts or whatever at Crandall Field. And about 10 years ago, um, I witnessed a child being burnt by somebody walking through the crowd with a lit cigarette. You got the kid right on the arm. And I had to administer first aid. So. Any commission members? Anyone else wish to be heard on this guy? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, Patrick was involved in another commission for how many years? 20 plus years. Um, signs are fine, but we had signs up about no skateboarding on the new tennis court. Kids skateboard on the tennis court. We chained picnic tables to a cement block buried in the ground, and they, they dug them up, and they moved those picnic tables onto the basketball court, stacked them on top of each other, so they could bend on the rims and hang on the basketball rims. So they're going to steal signs. They're, they're metal in the in the ground. We have a sign no littering. Just go by, go past any uh, <clears throat> after any t-ball game. It's all water bottles on the ground. So yeah, the cops aren't going to go around kicking people off the field. But we got to make it known. We have to have some type of uh, teeth to the led to the. Uh, ordinance so that people realize, you know, this is what we don't want you doing. And these events, for these kids' events, they only last about an hour. I mean, I don't know how people can't control themselves for smoking for an hour and just for the sake of the kids say, I'll smoke when I, before I leave the house and I'll smoke when I get back in the house. So we're not talking about four or five hour events or all day events. We're only talking about an hour to an hour and a half. And they can't smoke on any of the school properties. So when they go, they move from our programs, they go to the school programs. So we're already gearing them, putting them into that mindset of the no smoking. So I think that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Who can be heard on this? Do you know that? Okay. Uh, before we uh, close this, um, given the, the angst of, of a couple of members, um, I'm fine with um, just changing and uh, just having it be the crane of field and the they field and take the other parks out. Because I think, actually, you're right. I think uh, uh, Tom's point is, I think in general, um, those other parks, if ever, um, if ever a foot walks on them, it's usually an adult. So, um, you know, it's not kids' activities going on in these other three parks. If it becomes something later, maybe you change the ordinance. But So I'm okay with it just with moving forward and, and just having it these uh, two fields, green and green. Okay. Something to consider. Alright, so do we need any more time on this matter, folks, or do we want to... I actually really was thinking about that. I, feel like, I think that it would give everybody a chance to think about all the things said tonight, and it gives everyone a chance if we just do not close the hearing and just continue it one more time. It gives the public a chance to speak. It gives all of us a chance to think about the different issues that have been brought up, and I think any number of them have been good. And I think if we just um, continue the hearing, Try it one more time and then move on. Because I think some of the things are interesting. And the signage is interesting. I'd like to make a motion to continue uh, to close the hearing and set a date to consider adoption of the ordinance. Right. I'm sorry. That's, that's all right. I said I uh, move to close the hearing and set a date to consider adoption of the ordinance. That's what I'm saying. I see. Okay. Motion made and second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All those not, those not I'm sorry about all those not in favor. Ah. Okay, so the matter's been closed and we will um, figure out when we can uh, vote on this, I guess. Are we voting on it as it stands or are we voting on it changed? What are you going to have? What you usually do is just discuss discussion. Discussion. Right. So we'll 
So at the discussion, you can change the yes. yes. Yeah, yeah make, incorporate Sylvia's suggestion. Yeah. 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 Do we put it off to the second meeting in September? Does that work? Thank you for that spirited discussion. <laughs> okay, next on our uh, consent agenda, approved town council meeting minutes of August 3rd, 2015. Set September 8th, 2015 as the first town council meeting minute, meeting of the month due to Labor Day holiday. Set September 8th, 2015 as a hearing date for a special permit filed by Foster Parents Limited. Set September 21st, 2015 as a hearing date for a special event permit filed by the Friends of the Land Trust. Approved petition of the National Grade and Verizon for Joint Pole on Town Clark Road. Accept the following report. Town Clerk approve abatement submission of the tax assessor. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Anything that needs to be pulled in, guys? Are you guys all set with that? Okay. We'll do uh, on this. Uh, all the data that I've seen. Oh, okay. Um, so I move that we approve the consent agenda, moving the town council meeting minutes of August 3rd, 2015. Okay, second. Remove them. Okay, motion made second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Make a motion to approve the town council meeting minutes of August 3rd, 2015. Second. second. Motion made second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay, next uh, under my report is Town Council President Report, um, possible revival of the solar park in Hope Valley. I uh, had a brief meeting with a business owner in town that uh, might want to try and take over that um, property near the St. Joseph's Church where that boat is. I mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I talked to the, the planner. Um, I think all the typical approvals are in place. So it's a matter of just you know that person coming forward and uh, you know presenting to the council. I did meet with them and told them at which point you know we we, we got to it at a council meeting and having zero uh, assessed for the tangibles wasn't an option. So they said, well, I, I realize that and, and, and they want to make a, a proposal to the council. So I said, well, that's great. You know, the other folks never did come back and give us any other options other than zero. So he was well aware of that. Um, and so hopefully um, he'll talk to the planner. That's where I left it with him and, and see if they come before us. So, right. so anyway, I told him zero wasn't an option. So uh, <laughs> if you mirror something that, uh, similar to Richmond, but they enacted that might be something that might be more palatable for the council. So we'll have to see. And then uh, the second on my item list is uh, signing of easement on Palm Circle. I think I did talk to Roy Doves. He's uh, hopefully going to, um, he's agreed to give us uh, seven feet on his property to install the culvert. And uh, Pat has had it uh, drawn up the easement, uh, and I just have to have him sign it. I thought I was going to already have him sign it, but I couldn't connect with him. I left two copies with Lisa, and I uh, come by the clerk's office and sign that. She'll have it the horizon. And, so that's that. First public forum. Anyone out there wishing to be heard? Okay. Okay, next, if, if uh, you folks don't mind, I want to move up the last item because I've got Representative Acosta here. Uh, I want to move up the last item to the first item on the new business adoption of a resolution in support of the Quonset Ear Museum. Um, Representative Acosta, do you want to come to the podium and just give us a quick view on why this is so important? I look a lot taller on my TV, don't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Council, for uh, having me here tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I have a goal of getting every 39 cities and towns on board with resolutions to save the Quonset Air Museum. We're having a small issue down, down in Quonset and uh, a 15-foot area of the roof collapsed in the storage area, not in the hangar. So someone from the Rhode Island Land Park Corporation who actually owns the land can maintain the building unsafe. Well, it's my understanding that an architect cannot go into a building and deem it unsafe as against the law. So we had a structural engineer go in and hire a lift, and he has no stake in the game. He deemed the building safe. So we're trying to get a stay um, to keep the Air Museum in Quonset and keep it open. The planes right now are out on the field, 
and not tie down in a very hard thing season, and hopefully everything works out well. Um, the Speaker of the House will be joining me on September 1st to, um, to our Quantity Museum, and I was just um, notified today that I did get a $25,000 grant for them for their stay and for whatever we need. Now imagine this, imagine the Quantity Air Show without the planes, just the planes in the sky. Not only do the, the people that attend East lose, but the Hasbro Children Hospital will lose as well because all the money collected for the park that goes to the Hasbro Children Hospital. So there's a lot at stake here. And um, as of today, we have 21 cities and towns on board with their resolutions, I'm excited to say. And um, I'm hoping Hoffington will draft the resolution tonight as well. Thank you so much for your time and thanks for taking my call today and, and talking You're welcome, to you. My pleasure. It's good to see you. Thank you, thank you. I'd like to uh, go right to the motion and uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. But move that we support uh, this quest and that we uh, ought, that we approve the resolution from Hopkinton and want to be number 22. Second. <laughs> a motion made a second. Any further discussion goes I think it's a great idea. My colleagues and Army are number two with the Army Air Corps. So I think anything you do to keep the air museums alive is great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Okay, no further discussion. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Dorian. Thank you very much, Good to see you. Again. Thank you. Way to go. Okay, thank you, folks, for allowing me to get, get Dorian out of here quicker than uh, uh, it would have otherwise been. Uh, I'll skip now. I'll go back up to the top. Scheduled workshop for the council with the Affordable Housing Partnership and Jeff Marshawn, my friend in the back there, to discuss the use of CDBG affordable housing funds and possible regulations for the home rehabilitation program. This item, uh, I think, well, came about with, I think the council has gotten two letters from Jeff, who's the uh, chair of the Affordable Housing Partnership, you know, with some concerns about CDBG monies. And, you know, I, I tried to intervene briefly uh, to say, you know, you know the housing uh, partnership uh, hasn't really had quorums lately, but now they do, you know. So anyway, I, I'm, you know, they're kind of at odds as far as housing rehabilitation monies and who should be giving who the heads up and vice versa and all that. So I'm hoping that a workshop we can hammer out with the council, the partnership, and Mr. Marshawn. Um, I'm sure we can come to a conclusion and, and figure this all out so everyone's happy. Um, so I guess um, that's how it came about. Like I said, I got two letters. Like we all got two letters from Jared Rose expressing some concern, and I want to make sure that their, their voices are heard as well as Jeff and anyone else on the council, for that matter. Um, so I guess, uh, yes, Bob? I was just going to say, if we do that, which I think is a good idea, can we make that a, a separate um, yes. workshop not yes. combined? Into yeah, the yeah, exactly. Sylvia mentioned that too. So it will be a separate day okay. other than a council meeting. Because it is complex. When did, um, I forgot, when is that chair of a Tri-Town thing? Is that not October? October? Oh, okay. The 22nd. Oh, thank you. Okay. October? Okay. So I wondered what our schedule is like in Hopkinton, for instance, like the fourth week of September, something like that. Yeah. It's not tied up. Uh, He's always knows I don't know. Well, you're pretty good right, at it. So let's look here. I got the calendar here, okay. folks. Our meeting is, what, 21, right? Yeah. 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 So we could either read that prior week. We could meet um, the 28th, maybe. So Monday. Oh, the oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 28. We can do the 28th, although the interest interested to get something done at 7. It's true. And they need a grand Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. The so land interest is the grand of the historic district is in the other room. Okay. Okay. It's in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. You know, yeah. like in Alaska or something? Yeah. 28th, <laughs> yeah. 28th of September? A workshop that night? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 6.30? Start a little early. Does that work, Jim? Send me an email. I don't know. All right. <laughs> At least it can be. And you'll let the housing partnership be able to All right. All right, so 928, 630. Workshop. Great. Great. We'll hammer it all out. Okay. All right. Uh, next on the new business, discuss and consider, discuss, consider, and act upon a petition submitted by National Grid Horizon to install seven joint telephone poles on Chase Hill Road. Bill, you want to uh, start off this page?
Well, back on July 13th, uh, we received a, a petition from National Grid of Horizon uh, requesting um, <clears throat> uh, seven new utility poles on uh, Chase Hill Road, uh, just past the intersection of uh, Oak Street. Uh, the paperwork came through, uh, and uh, generally what we do is we uh, ask the Director of Public Works to go out to the scene uh, and evaluate it. He uh, took some photographs uh, that are attached uh, in your package, uh, and uh, it appears that um, uh, three of the poles are for uh, utility poles are to support the uh, the additional uh, transmission lines, uh, and the other four are support poles with anchors uh, on Chase Hill Road. Uh, and I'll defer to uh, Tim Teft if he can give you more detailed explanation as to. Uh, the intent of those polls and his recommendation. Thanks, Bill. Now you use no, no introduction. Uh, I, I'm sorry it took so long, as, as you know, it comes through on July 13th, but with this many polls, I wanted to make sure what was going on. Um, I tried to get a hold of uh, National Grid, and they were able to get a representative out there. Unfortunately, we couldn't get everything done in time to have it for the last council meeting. That's why it's done today. Um, as Bill had said, three of them are going to be the support poles, three of them are support, and the other are going to be additional poles put in between. There's some really long spans on Chase Hill Road, and if, even the poles themselves aren't really all that that massive if you look at them. So they're going to put some more in between them to support it because they're going to be running new wires out from the new substation that's going to be coming out on Ashway Road. Um, I've got some issues, but if, I'm not trying to pass the buck. But we have an expert called Stosik. Stasia. Stasia. From uh, National Grid, he's represented. He could answer your question probably better than that can't make that kind of direction. Sounds good, Tim. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Back, Paul. It's good to see you. How are you doing? Good. Good to see everyone. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Um, just for, as everyone have a package, there's seven poles that we're looking at. The spans are over, in some cases, 300 feet. And with the weight of uh, what we call four wire construction, uh, if you look out here, that's what we're talking about. And the spans for that need to be more of what we would naturally build today, 150 foot distance between poles. And so if you um, look out there, that's 150 feet out there. That's typical nowadays. So um, because we're going to this new construction, that's like in, we want to get away from the open construction. This one is newer, what we call Hendrix con configuration, where they have sort of like lobster claws holding the wires together. They're bundled closer, so they don't have as much space and lower profile. So it helps in tree trimming and everything else. Gives more support too. Any questions that you oh, have? Right, um, you know, I have no problem with this at all. I'm just part of, you know, part of what we should do on occasion. Uh, I, I will have a problem though if, if those old poles are removed. I think Tim mentioned it or Phil mentioned it to you that <coughs> this Bill, Tim uh, yeah. mentioned to yeah. me. I I went around town uh, just to see what else there was, mm -hmm. and I counted eight poles of which we can remove probably five or six of them okay. within the next three to four weeks yes. and get rid of them completely. Now, the other are two... Are these double holes? Yes, holes. Are the, yeah. other holes. Uh, the three on Chase Hill have nothing on them. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, Verizon changed to a new system called Engines. Some towns are, some utilities are adapting it, we are not. And that's where some of this is falling into place is that they're not in our system anymore, and they're not on their system. So Verizon is going out and doing an audit of the whole state. They haven't got the hot one yet, and they're planning to go and go through the town here as well as all the others, yeah. and make sure they've got everything addressed. Double poles, poles in general, where they're located, numbers. Who, who owns the poles? They're jointly owned. Uh. We do maintain um, maintenance yep. of 50% of the poles in the state. 
and Kim Verizon looks after the other. Now, down here um, in Hopkinton, mm -hmm. we are, we maintain the polls. Right. But you, but you split the, 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 the award is 50-50. Absolutely. Right. So you, you just we need their you approval see? as well as ours right. for anything that's done out there. Okay. But if there's uh, a storm that has to be put out, we're responsible for putting the new pole back out. So you're telling me there are some poles that you will take away? Oh, there's um, there's three on there's three on Chase Hill. There's one on uh, Ashway Road, yeah. pole 14, that has to get removed. There's one on Church Street that is removed to put all the utilities. One that is not. We still need Cox Cable as well as Verizon on that, and Hillside as well. Now, um, I have a I talked to a foreman tonight, he says he'll gladly get rid of those for us, mm -hmm. at least the six of them, mm -hmm. but then he'll contact Cox and Verizon. Anything you can do to push them to move it along, I am filling out forms and getting them submitted tomorrow so it gets on their system as well as ours so that no one can say we weren't aware of it. Right. Any, one thing we did in Westerly, they had uh, a much bigger issue is on the website, um, I have no problem if you want people to report into your website and they can give me that data of where there's a double hole. Mm -hmm. And then, because people see them, mm -hmm. they don't know what to do with them. Why would, they, why would we have to do that? I mean, every time you guys put in a pole, you should have a thing right there that says replacing pole or double pole. So we, we the other one's putting them in. And but there's other the people on the on the pole. I understand that, but if you're the maintenance guy, you need to be the ones to take charge and to contact those people. We do. And to, and to be on them. Be on them constantly. Call them every week. I, I, I'm going to get the numbers, because those ones at, at them Church Street, they've yeah. been there since the hurricane. And I've called a number of times about those. I started calling Bill about them. There's ones on Chase Hill at uh, 216 that you just mentioned Poll number 14, mm -hmm. you missed poll number 24. Uh, poll, uh, I went and checked it. Uh, there's there's no double poll at 24, it's 14. Okay, and I, well, I was driving 35 miles an hour on my past, but that's what it was. No, I, I was checking it. But well. I mean, that's got to be your responsibility. No, we do, but we are responsible. But again, when there should be system, two years to take a poll. On. You're absolutely right. And we The problem is, we visited this. 2008, Bob? Yeah. So we were somewhere on that. I mean, it was all over the place. And I don't want it to see to get to that point. I mean, there must we be don't either. 15 poles, that, double poles that need to be removed. And, and now we've already come up, you've come up with eight, so we're starting to get to that number again. And I'm starting to hear from, from residents, I mean, the guy right at the corner. Um, he, he, every time I drive by, hey, how are we making out with those poles? I said, ah, we're going to put holes in them and grow flowers. I mean, because that's how long I've been there. So, I mean, for us to put it on our website, yeah, it may be an avenue, but when you guys put in a new pool, pole, because you put them in, mm -hmm. your work order should say, what's on that pole, and it needs to be removed within 30 days. That, that's fine, but we can't get Cox or Verizon to do that. Take this stuff, don't let them use the pole. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that either. They have a right to be there. It's not that easy. There's got to be an avenue to get those poles out. It, it's very hard to get them. I mean, it happens all the time. It can be a car accident, or a vehicle accident. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it gets done in the middle of the night. It gets put into the system. We probably transfer us because we're always first to go. And then we got to leave it up. We give them a call and we put it into the system. What they do with it, they're not going to run it out for one. They'll wait for another one to come. I mean, we can go after them and tell them, but it's sometimes on deaf ears. They don't want to do it at, at the time that's inconvenient for them, or it, it, it's just, yeah. it's, it's not easy. There are a lot of double poles out there and poles that need to get, you know, put back in. And I'm just saying that. We try our best, and you bring it to me, and I'll do my best to resolve it. No, sir, no. Uh, I, 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 just, I, just, I just can't believe it takes years. When was the hurricane? How long was the hurricane? Three years ago? 2012. Three years ago, almost. October. So, I mean, that's how long it takes to get rid of a pole? I mean, 
mean, that's, that's my concern. It's, just, it's like it's not an issue, um, and it should be. If you put something in, you can take something out. No, I understand. So, I mean, and as far as it kind of go into this, since we're talking about this, I'm a little concerned about where you're putting the poles and you're putting an anchor in. I mean, those are beautiful stone walls. And that gentleman spent many, many hours building those stone walls. And now we're going to start putting telephone poles in there. Isn't there a larger girth telephone pole that you can put in, put in a little deeper to hold the support? Can you put a gusset going backwards in? I've seen gussets on poles instead of guide wires. Um, can it stay on the same road, same area where the pole is now? Why do we have to go and it's, it's just because of, of the, the view of those snow walls. I mean, when he started building that, that was in the front page of the paper. It's, 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 everybody talks about them. And to stick a telephone pole now in front of them where they have never been, uh, I'm just wondering if there's another avenue that we can do before we... That's our typical construction, and we'll review them, but they're pretty much standard where we have to put those. Mm. Uh, I mean, I've seen bigger poles. You've got them all over the place, larger than girth poles that hold that. Um, right. And still, you've got, it's you've still too long of the span for that type of pole. Well, can't you put them on the same side of the street? Again, it depends how the street goes in terms of curves and everything else. But that where you have to try I'm looking it. at pole number 38. And it's, it's bending around backwards, so the angles are going to want to pull that pole backwards into the into the brush here. To put a pole and an anchor on the opposite side where those stone walls are, it'd be just as easy to put a gusset in there. Another pole at a 45 degree angle. I, I'd, have 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 engineer, I'd have to have an have an engineer look at it. Since I can't make that recommendation. No, I'm I'm just saying I've seen them. And that's my concern of muddying up the view with, with all these poles and why they can't just go on the same. If you're putting the extra poles, mm -hmm. so you're showing your 300 distance to 150 feet. I mean, I'm not sure why you would need the anchor. It depends on how the pole is aligned on the street, depending on the curve of the street. And that's why they're put on different sides. It's not always on the same side of the street. No, it's I the same road. I understand that, but I mean, this one here is one I'm looking at, and the way the, the wires go, and the way it's going to pull is backwards. And I understand the issue with the pole and the anchor across the street, spanning to stop it. It's not back. always backwards, sometimes forwards, too. I, I understand that, okay. but I'm looking at this picture. I don't have that. Pole number 38 is the one that um, you want to put a proposed anchor and pole. So that one could have the, the gusset on the back side. Um, pole number 49, okay, that may be a different issue because that looks like it. But it's still around the corner, so it should still be able to pull back. If you want to mark them up, I can get them to the engineer. I'm, more welcome. Right. I'm looking at this one here. This one here also goes back <coughs> around the corner. So I mean, I would, I would look at keeping those anchors on the opposite side, on the same, or adding the poles to the same side and muddying up the, the landscape. It may not be feasible. That's all I'm saying. Good. Well, yes, I would be willing to meet with someone out there. All right, Barbara was next. Barbara, do you have some questions? Yeah, I have a question. I know you've got these 300 feet apart, and then between two of the new poles, it's 1,215 feet, so you're putting one pole at 131, but then the next one is at, uh, it should be 1,000 feet apart. Right here, no, no, right here. There's this pole and this pole. Um, there's 1,215 feet between pole 5450 and pole 3884. Um, uh, it, it probably doesn't yeah. show the poles in between at that point there because the um, that's 
full 45 for There's some reason. Something's not right on that. I'll have to close Yeah, which is because that, that doesn't look right at all. And then the other question is on the other side, at full 60 84, full 49 84, it's 1,500 feet apart. Right. And so having to do them closer because you need the weight for the new wires. Well, there's wires. 11 poles that aren't shown on that one. Okay, so there are poles here that aren't shown. Correct. It's just, I think, because of the scale of it, mm -hmm. that, again, there's curves in this road. It's not a straight road. It's... Well, yeah, the, the 1,215 apart, I mean, there's no scale at all. Right. They're, they're changing their scale as they go. Um, <clears throat> I just wonder why you're doing that. And I'm assuming where it's half pink and half clear, that's where you're going to go across the street to a support pole? Yes. That's a joint pole? Well, there's no J -O -O -O. Pole. That's why I'm Proposed J O pole. I'm going to have to get a clear. Would you clear? Picture. Yep. Yeah, because this is not very understandable. And that there, the existing poles now are fewer than you have. Thanks. So, no problem. The ones with the half uh, red, half blank are the seven poles that are being requested. Are the what statement, sir? The seven poles that are being requested are the dots with the half, right. half red. Half. They're going to have a support pole. They're just going to be a single pole. Without, a, without the... They could be support poles, depending and if there's a... Let me, let me get one that has more... Get a few pages so that you can see exactly how the, the yeah, poles are aligned. Yeah, where the proposed support pole is and where the anchor is. Yep. Get you a clearer picture. I think <coughs> I, I, to Tom Buck's point, uh, the bottom line is wherever possible, we're not looking to provide new poles uh, right next to in supports right next to those stone walls. So that's that's the issue. If it, if it Again, done, I have to. No, see all I can say is you get the gist. No, if I understand. Done differently, that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, the, Poles that are going to be removed on Chase Hill are they in the they are the ones that are on in this area where you're putting the new seven or are they up and down the road? They're they're pretty they'll be in that area. They'll be in this area. Yes. Okay. So I, I think it sounds like we need to you know kind of table this and wait. Yeah, for let me let me get you the better information. Uh, I'm going to be meeting again. Uh, this Thursday, so hopefully by then I can have that information. And we should all drive down Chase Hill and look at that specific spot. Yeah. Now, there's any others besides 38 that you were interested, Tom? In? What's that? Oh, hold on. That was just the one that I had the photo of. Right. But I just wondered if there's any others. Well, let's see. This Looks like pole 27 yeah. has an anchor and a pole across the street in front of those. Pole 38 is another one that has the anchor and pole across the street. Mm -hmm. um, pole 49, I mean, that's going to have a pole across the street. you got that big old maple right there. It would be a shame to kill the roots on that. But uh, it was basically the ones in front of the stone walls. Okay. I mean, you just put so much work in there. No, I mean, you just talk about the stone walls, if you had seen that thing probably eight years ago, and what it looks like now, it's quite gorgeous. So I just, I just don't want to see if we try not to muddy the waters. Uh, if I can I do it, it and do it whatever we can. To I would love to have you put that all on the ground. <laughs> I don't think that down there for it. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. I don't think the right band is going to afford it. Oh, not us. Yeah. yeah. Um, my other question was again minimizing the effect on the stone walls if we could. No, I'm not sure if that's feasible. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I often thought about underground, but I, I don't know if that's cost prohibitive or not. It is. Yeah, okay. But you know, whatever you can do. The cost of this project is into the multi million. Let's not forget, Paul wants to reiterate the point of which these poles are needed it's the substation. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, We're bringing a feeder out that uh, will help with. 
you know, basically um, the whole system out there and the liability is number one and safety is number two, you know, for this area. So uh, I have to say that, you know, we'll take this into consideration, see what we can come up. Maybe we can work something out that works in everyone's favor. And let me see what we can do. And again, um, and then we'll come back with a revised uh, plan and see if that's more powerful. And I know, I know we talked about the seven goals, maybe we could reduce it to five and minimize the effect. Whatever, I'm just yeah. throwing it out there as to minimize the effect. On and and some of these goals are in areas where the, it's not, from the start to the finish on Chase Hill, it doesn't connect. Mm -hmm. This will connect, and that's why we've got to do some of this. Yeah. Well, I was up there, so I understand what you're saying. The other question, so how do you want to if you could get Bill the phone numbers to your contacts to Verizon to Cox to Fox, I'll ask the supervisors for those. Yep. Get that to Bill, I'll be more than happy to call. Oh, that'd be great. Once We'd appreciate it. I mean, we our supervisors talk to them on an ongoing basis. Uh, to hear a different voice really helps. Yeah. <laughs> I have my daughter call on Wednesday. <laughs> 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 All right, so I guess we'll. Um, we won't act on that until we get Paul well, gets us more information yeah. to build. Um, just to look at the different construction out there, there's uh, a couple pictures there. One is the open and one is the new construction for the pools. And you can see the difference in the construction along the top. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a big difference in that area. So we're trying to reduce the footprint of the wooden bowl. These are still poles or wooden bowls? They're all wooden. Okay. Well, so uh, I'm not this is why the open construction in here, see how this is tight? Oh. So that you have oh, okay. And you have that out here as well, so you can see it going out tonight. So the new Hendrix construction is more tighter. Yeah. yeah. And it's stronger too? No, it's stronger too. So we've got double poles. We've got to revisit where the pole line is proposed for the new poles. Anything else? Minimize the effect on that stone wall. Absolutely. Um, I was hoping Mr. Grills might be here, but I guess not. So. Okay, yeah. This is that, folks. <coughs> thank you. Thanks, Paul. All right, thank you. Can I make a suggestion if you don't sure, mind? Please. All right, since we all seem to be concerned about the area, is there some way? I know it's been touched upon, it hasn't been said, that we can set up an appointment where the representative of the national group as well as the council members who would like to be there can meet so we can talk this through a little bit better out there than whether the city should set somebody to work council members, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. can't have a quorum, but two, yeah. one or two of us. Right. Just so that people can, you know. So Tom will go. I can go. All right. So someone we can set up a meeting with the sure. uh, We can discuss that. Um, like I said, we've got a meeting for an update of what's going on with the substations. This week, so we've got that one. We can see what we can do for our timing. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Cost principles and our requirements of federal awards effective December 26, 2014. Thank you. Uh, in May of this year, uh, the statewide plan, which is now called the Office of Housing and Community Development, conducted a routine monitoring site visit uh, to review our files for the CGB, uh, CDBG program. Uh, the town received high praise uh, from statewide planning as a result of the monitoring, and there were uh, no formal findings. However, the agency recommended that the town add some additional language to the procurement policy to be compliant with the changes made to the federal and state regulations back uh, effective December 26, uh, 2014. Uh, and in a nutshell, uh, the current procedures adopted by the town council which is our purchasing policy, have not changed. They're just incorporated uh, within the augmented procurement policy. However, this policy now contains uh, contract language 
check that, uh, contains language sufficient to govern federally funded small purchase and competitive bid procurements. Uh, their, uh, their proposed policy is uh, 26 pages long, and our former policy was just one page long. Uh, it's kind of <laughs> seems like an overkill for a, a small town like uh, Hockington, but I will say a lot of the recommendations that they make, although they weren't in our, our purchasing policy, they are uh, in fact incorporated within the request for proposals that go out. For example, we do say best qualified bid, the best interest of the town, the, uh, the, the time to submit bids is between 7 and, and uh, 21 days. So uh, I think a lot of their procurement policy we really already do. And it's, uh, it, this will allow us to access federal funds for the Crandall House uh, and the town hall generators and any other uh, federal funding that may come down the pike in the future. Uh, if we didn't adopt this policy, uh, we wouldn't we would not be able to access those federal funds. I spoke with Brian Rosso uh, many times, and he spent an awful lot of, lot of time on it. And I'll just defer to Brian because uh, he he edited and tailored um, the federal policy to meet the town's needs. Brian, thanks. Good evening, Council. Um, yeah, I think I think he nailed it. Um, you know, in a nutshell, the policy that we adopted has not changed as far as the thresholds, uh, the required quotes. A lot of the stuff that they wanted to see in the new purchase, uh, procurement policy was code of conduct, uh, ethics, language, uh, which we we did inherently, but we just didn't have any writing in our policy. Uh, some additional recording and filing requirements, uh, which I think in a lot of cases, you know, we followed as well. Um, some of them require a little bit more documentation. Uh, I tried to add some language where needed um, to state that we would make the additional requirements and filing if it was federally funded um, procurements, but if it wasn't, we could continue our regular practice uh, just so we didn't have to get locked down with all this additional paperwork uh, when it wasn't required. Um, but I think, uh, again, I think the, the main point is that our current policy is intact. They just want to see additional language in there. And if you guys have any questions on any of that, I'm more than happy to speak to you. On page five of the document, it's got uh, 3.2 ethics in public contracting, bottom of the page. Yep. It says no employee elected official or council member. Uh, I wanted to add. In, in, to talk to you about it. No employee appointed or elected official. So I just wanted to add appointed. And I think that comes up in a couple of places, so I'll, I'll make that consistent throughout. And um, with that, how does this affect the land trust? Or does it? This doesn't. It, yeah. I'm just asking the question. I didn't know if this procurement policy was also something that the land trust would need to follow. Yes, sir, I'm not the land trust. I know. Right. Okay. So, Tom, no. You also have a Sylvia's on set? David, do you have any um, questions you want? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I had a question. Um, so, this large procurement policy is going to basically be an addendum to our policy? Uh, I think we so have stopped it, yeah. That was so, the idea. <coughs> we're going to go from one page to 26 pages. Your federal government or <laughs> yeah, enjoy. Um, and my real concerns was on time and um, how much time, personnel, and manpower it takes to do these 26 pages. Well, to write it? Is not that, just that's to write okay. it. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. But to uh, actually have it, to It's really it. not a lot of additional requirements. If there is additional requirements, it really falls on the federally funded procurements, mm -hmm. and there's really no way we can see around that. And we don't have that many of them anyway. And we don't have that many of them, and I think you know we have to play their game if sure. we want to you know, well, continue to that. receive the funds. Um, and like I said, I tried to add um, verbiage in here that would stipulate those additional requirements only when it was federally funded. Mm -hmm. So that if it was just a regular procurement, and again, the uh, department heads, nothing's going to change on their end. Um, they're going to continue to voucher, same process, they're going to require the same amount of quotes at the same thresholds, so that, that's all. And, and I think you can even see like the small purchase 
section, it's actually our whole policy is actually still intact um, within the body of it. Okay, so that's great. So the 26 pages we were able to do because we already do. It would have been 25, and then we added our, our one page, yeah. Thanks. Uh, I know you mentioned something about the filing and recording. Is there any extra expenses that we're going to incur now with this new procurement policy might go into effect? Um, in terms of recording or filing fees or anything like that? It's just going to be more, a little more labor intensive on, on our end. Um, but I didn't really see any way to, to get around that. No, no, no. I mean, considering how much money we've gotten over the years with CDBG money and, and hurricane money, it's, uh, I think it's something that it's a no brainer. Anyway, uh, Bill, do you have anything further on it? Are you all set? Okay, Can I make a motion? Please. I move that we uh, adopt the purchasing and procurement policies and procedures in order to conform to the uniform administrative requirements, cost principles, and audit requirements for federal awards with the one change, the one edited change. Sure. Second. Okay, motion made a second. Any further discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Last public forum. Anyone else that wishes to be heard? Okay, I'm sorry. Motion to adjourn from the social security. Second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.